Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video we are going to talk about cell biology and in particular we are going to talk about cell membrane structure and properties. And here is a question. When scientists at John Hopkins University fused human cells with mouse cells that had been dyed blue and red respectively, they made an important breakthrough regarding cell membranes. What was it? And here are four variants to choose from. First of all, I want you to take a look at this picture, which shows the structure of the eukaryotic cell membrane. And here we see phospholipid bilayer, which separates extra fluid, which is mostly water, and cytoplasm, which is also mostly water. So it is polar outside and polar liquid inside. Hence orientation of phospholipid molecule. So his increased version of one molecule. And you see that head is polar and two tails are non-polar. That means they are hydrophobic and the head is hydrophilic. The head has a charge, so it is hydrophilic and two tails consist of only carbons and hydrogens. So they are hydrophobic. In the cell membrane, we also can find a lot of proteins with carbohydrates on some of them. This is sugar molecules. Some of the proteins we call integral proteins, though they look very different, but we see that they go through the whole bilipid layer. So it has one tail on one side and on the other side. Some of them can be alpha helix based, other can be based on the beta pleated sheets and they can also pass some molecules inside and outside of the cell. And the third type of molecules that we can find in abundance is cholesterol. So you see these molecules of the cholesterol here, which affect fluidity of this bilipid layer. In 1970, scientists was not sure whether these proteins can move freely, just like rafts float, or they are embedded and stay in the same place, for example, integrated with structural proteins, which you can see here in yellow color, cytoskeleton proteins, which are type of filamentous proteins. So the scientists in John Hopkins University decided to conduct the following experiments. They took one cell, which was human cell, and another cell, which was cell from the mice. Each type of the cell has hundreds of different types of the proteins on its surface, which are integrated in the phospholipid bilayer. In the next step, they applied blue and red respectively dyes to each type of the cell, human and mice. With the next step, they fuse these two cells into the one hybrid cell. There is a number of ways how we can do it. For example, with a laser, with electroporation, with electric current, or for example, with chemicals. And this is a picture what they saw right after they fuse two cells. So this is hybrid cell and this is how it looks like. But after 40 minutes of incubation, this cell change its appearance under the microscope and start look as follows. And they call it fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane, proving that cell membrane behaves as fluid and proteins also can move freely and can change places. Now let's check our answers. Variant A, cell membranes from mice were very different from those in human cells. It is obvious that we have different proteins because we are different species. So this was not the case. It was not the hypothesis of the experiment. Variant B, human cell membranes did not hold the dye as well. Also, this is, was not the goal of the experiment and it doesn't prove anything. Variant C, the few cells grow and reproduce pink cells. 
Actually, such cell can grow. And what is interesting, such cells are going to lose most of the human chromosomes. And mice chromosomes would prevail in such hybrid cell, but they are not going to produce new pigment, of course. So this is also wrong statement. And variant D, the proteins in the cell membranes were moving around as if in a fluid mosaic. So this is correct variant. This is what they have proved with the ingenious experiment. So our choice is answer D. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.